Now, complete high school football coverage. This is 10 Sports First and 10, brought to you by these sponsors. Welcome to the big show, everybody. Week 10, in case you missed our trick-or-treat event at Lehman Family Farms, WSLS 10 basically turned it into a Jurassic Park sequel, and it continues tonight in the newsroom, folks. It's, uh, it's kooky. It's crazy. Uh, we'll channel all that as the regular season winds down. You didn't ask for reality. You asked for more teeth, and we're giving it to you. Dr. Henry Wu's got nothing on Samantha Smith and her staff, Ali Graham and the web team, as they continue to keep us updated on all things football on the first and ten site. Which brings us to what amounts to our breakdown segment a little early. The River Ridge has a number of teams that should make playoff pushes in their respective divisions, including Patrick Henry at Pulaski tonight. 10 Sports' Eric Johnson has a look at this key matchup. Pulaski County and Patrick Henry have given us some of the more entertaining matchups over the past few years. No exception Friday night, bruising physical play mixed with offensive talent all over the field. It did not take long for the scoring to get started. Christopher Gallimore for the Cougars, a perfect pitch to Tyler Underwood. He gets to the edge, then it's shake, rattle and roll to the house with a touchdown, and it's a 7-0 Pulaski County lead. The Patriots come right back down the field with an answer. Play action, Joey Beasley hits Carl Carmelo Taylor on a slant to tie this game up at seven apiece. Then the Patriots defense makes its presence known. Xavion Smith, grown man move with the sack on the play. Ensuing PH drive, Jose Kimbrough says hello. 14 yard scamper through traffic, 13 to seven score. Cougars would respond. Trevor Burton had a 51 yard run, finished up the drive here to put Pulaski County up 14 to 13. But like Michael Jordan in the 90s, PH, took that personally. They scored 29 unanswered points. Joey Beasley over the top, finding Taylor in stride, 55-yard dime as the Patriots led 28-14 at halftime after Bodie Cahoon came up with a fumble recovery. PH would finish this game off 56-27 to as Sidney Webb added a 67-yard touchdown. Hey, yeah, big big win on the road. I mean, you can come down Pulaski and win, it's always tough. Defense was good in the first half, played really well. Got a little lax in the second half. You know, we got to bring it four quarters. All everyone did their jobs. Started off with a touchdown earlier, but we fought back. We earned, we earned it. We played hard. The effort was definitely there. We knew it was going to be a hard fraud game when we came out here. We came out here, put our mindsets to it, and we did it. We're going to come with a show next week. Y'all be ready. Patrick Henry played a very complimentary game tonight in what was a great primer for what they're looking forward to next week. A showdown against Salem and a possible share for the River Ridge District title. In Dublin, Eric Johnson, 10 Sports. All right, staying in the River Ridge, these two teams as the four and five seeds currently in the district would both like to improve a notch or two. That said, they squared off tonight. Talking about Christiansburg at Cave Spring. And here we go. Hot ticket in Roanoke County tonight. Here we go. Scoreless first quarter. Tanner Evans to J. Ron Thompson. 41-yard throw and catch. And that is a thing of beauty. 7-0 Seaburg in this one. Next, Blue Demon possession. Evans with a fake. So good. The party is at his place. Check it out. There he goes. He's got the rock. Ramble and roll. 64-yard touchdown. 14-0 Christiansburg. More Blue Demons. Evans to Thompson connecting again. 33-yard touchdown. Evans would leave the game after this play late in the first half. The Knights quarterback, Landon Altizer, also with some injury trouble. He left the game as well. This one goes to Christiansburg, 24 to 14. Meantime, last evening, Salem was victorious, 61 to 3. And tonight, Graham over Blacksburg, 56 to 7. Speaking of those Region 3D standings, Bassett has played their way into the second position behind LB. Tonight, a challenge from Class 4 GW Danville in the Piedmont. Here we go. Halifax County and Bassett. And Halifax County looking good early. Comets driving. And uh, they're picked off by Casey Ferguson to end the threat. Nice game. Bengals, though, qu without quarterback Jerikas Hairston, they started Elijah Stokes. He's Aaron and Darren to Jacob Gilbert. Nice catch here on the adjustment. The drive would stall, and Halifax would strike Joshua Miller to open spaces for the lead, and the Comets were in this one. More Comets. It's Joshua Miller with a pick six. 
But Bassett would score 35 unanswered points, three touchdowns from Stokes to more than make up for this mistake. Bassett 35 to 13. Martinsville 42 to 25. And the Magnavis to G-Dub game is coming on Saturday. Keep that in mind as we go to Class 1 action. The Mountain Empire still up for grabs. Undefeated Grayson at District Unbeaten George With We knew from the get-go this was going to be a good one. Here here we go. First quarter handoff. Leighton Fowler. He's going to find a hole. And then he will be taken down just short of the pylon. But Tandem Smith will keep it in for the quick six right there. Grayson had an answer on the next drive. This is Chase Poole. He is going left. He has the corner. And he is gone for the touchdown. George With on a fourth down. They needed a touch. They needed a first down. Tandem Smith literally head over heels to move the chains. Later that drive, Ben Jolly with the ball in overdrive. And yeah, that's an out of my kitchen situation. Did you see him push that defender away with 27 to 22? Big victory tonight. Galax 35 7. They are victorious tonight. Taswell over Fort Chiswell 48 to 13. How about Holt? Holston, a winner on the road, and Rockbridge County in the Valley District, big over Harrisonburg, 44 to 23. Ooh, ah, that's how it always starts, but then later, there's running and screaming. Radford's 1972 team sent everybody running for cover. We honor them and their legendary coach tonight. The Colonels have been turning heads as of late. Could they keep it going against the Golden Eagles? And in Bath County, Jake Phillips has the Chargers at the top of the Pioneer. Would they stay there? Plus this. We're the George Witt cheerleaders. Stay tuned for more first and ten. All right, it is certainly a special night at the home of the Bobcats where the school and community came together to honor the 50th anniversary of the 1972 state championship football team. We caught up with many of the former players that were on hand tonight earlier in the week, including quarterback Ken Alderman and standout defensive lineman Jim Plott, among many others. Radford went 32-0, capturing back-to-back -back state titles in 1971 and 1972. Under the legendary head coach Norm Lineberg, coach ranked second in wins in VHSL history. The field at Radford is named after the Hall of Fame coach. Well, they were so easy to coach. They were uh, all of them were were were, were, were uh, very coachable. But there's not anything like coming on this field, beautiful, beautiful stadium, and they come out of that locker room and uh, they go down and touch the goalpost. They they listen to that national anthem and you got goose pimples all over you. And we're thrilled and fired up and ready to go. That's just the way it's always been. My a good friend of mine is about 18 years younger than me. Every time this thing comes up, which it does kind of regular, he said, y'all were on everybody's refrigerator, Jim. And everybody in town had a picture of the Bobcats of that state team on their refrigerator. And what such a great teacher and role model we've had in, in Coach Lindenberg and uh, all of our coaches we had, Ron Matlock, our line coach, Ron Linden, our back coach and uh, secondary coach. Um, they were tremendous for our kids back in those days. And Indeed, Coach Lindenberg's career record stands at 315, 160, and 9, second in all-time wins in the VHSL. Which brings us to current day. Radford having another legendary season. 8-0 to this point. They get rival Glenford tonight. We knew it was going to be a good one. There they are. There's the team in all their glory out there. And, yeah, give them some props. They certainly deserve it. That said, let's get to it. Play one. Here we go. Game back and forth all night. This is Glenver down 2017, but not long. Brody Doyot finds Gabe Ford in the end zone later. Fourth quarter, Bobcats coming back. Landon Clark to Parker Prelu. He just barely gets his toes down 27-24. Radford once again, the Highlanders going to have an answer. This time it's Doyot scrambling to find Jackson Swanson wide open. That is a Glenver touchdown. But here comes Radford right back. Clark stepping up finding Marcel Baylor putting the Bobcats up 34-31. Just under three to go, but on a third and long, Glenver in desperate need of a conversion. 
Doyot going to Gabe Ford, and he would save the drive right here on the fly, and he would be the difference maker down the stretch, scoring the final touchdown. As time expires, Glenver 37-34 in a crazy finish tonight. How about Carroll County at James River? It's senior night in Buchanan. Early action. Second play of the game. Bryce Smoot is going the distance for the Cavaliers' lead. More Cavs. How about Joshua Dalton right here? As they had their ground game cranked up. Look at this. Nice trap play inside. And he is into the zone. And Carroll County has a nice lead. James River going to... Defense going to stiffen. This is Jonathan Austin with the stuff up front. And then James Rivers, Brian Moran. He's elusive. He's exclusive. How about that move to get some nice yards on the punt return? But James River, when they were about to cash in, going deep, get picked right here by Elias Sample. The death theft in Carroll County comes away with a 28 to 7 victory tonight. More scores for you. Appomattox, the Raiders rolling in the dogwood. Meantime, Dan River by a touchdown over Chatham in a quality contest. The Colonels of Alta Vista rolling tonight over Nelson County and Gretna takes down Tunstall 40 to 6. To the Blue Ridge District reminder, Franklin County at Lord Botata tomorrow night. Tonight, Stanton River with some momentum at a talented William Fleming team. Another Crazy upside down night in football. Pick it up midway through the third. River up 24 to 6. Malachi Coleman, 11 yard touchdown. Colonels convert to two point conversion. It's 24 14. Eagles add to the lead. Nathaniel Martin, 30 yard field goal off of William Fleming turnover, 27 14. But Malachi Coleman and company, here we go. Five yard touchdown, 27 20. Right here, two minutes left in the game. Coleman taking the handoff, nearly gets tripped up here, somehow keeps his feet, and look at him book. 70 yards for the touchdown, and yes, if you're doing the math at home, it's now 27-26. So what are you going to do? You're going to give it to Devin Johnson, who fakes and puts his foot in the turf, and look at him go. He is into the end zone, comeback complete, William Fleming, 28 27. Northside at William Byrd tonight. Here we go. The dog pound is fired up. Picking up in the second quarter. Israel Hairston had a game. Look at him go. Nice move here. Gets to the cone. 27 nothing Terriers. A few plays later, one more look at Mr. Hairston. He fakes the handoff, cuts through the defense, and look at him ramble and roll right here. Nicely done as William Byrd was imposing their will to the score of 37 to nothing. Again, this reminder, Lord Botetot, Franklin County, they are playing tomorrow night. Life finds a way. We'll see tonight if it's the Hilltoppers or the Bees that find a way to victory in another Seminole District showdown when we come back. <laughs> Perry McClure at Bath County. The Chargers tonight, it was senior night, and all the seniors joined on the field with their families. Chargers quarterback Wyatt Campbell keeping the ball going 11 yards down to the four-yard line. A few plays later, it's Wyatt Campbell again. He's going to drop back. He's looking, looking, looking. Braden Mabe makes the catch for the four-yard touchdown. Blues coming right back. Brennan Sly making the nice pass to Cody Thomas, 28-yard gain. Same drive from the three-yard line. It's Sly to John Snyder. That is big John Snyder, in case you've forgotten. Snyder would score three touchdowns tonight. Perry McClure, 33-17. More Pioneer scores for you. Covington over Eastmont, 48-6. to Craig County at Narrows. That game was canceled as we're moving on now to Allegheny. How about Floyd County at Allegheny tonight? Will Field, some last-minute advice for his squad. This is Ryan Schwartzel handing the ball off. He gets loose. The ball gets loose. Allegheny's going to recover right there. Their ball and Eli Ensminger to Garrett Vi. We know all about him. Touchdown! Mountaineers, 21-6. Watch as Garrett Vi goes right here, and the Mountaineers have the ball again. Pretty pick. And Eli Ensminger handing off to Garrett Vi, and he's going to score again from four yards out. 
our former player of the week still getting it done 28 to 6 big win over Floyd County we're moving on and we're talking about the Seminole District again Brooke I think all these teams can think playoffs or most of them anyway but there's one the Bulldogs that were wondering if they're going to make the run all the way and it's hard to believe that they won't I watched them play last week they're, they're awesome incredible but you have to get through the Seminole District and that's right tonight it was Amherst County all right LCA up 6 nothing end of the first quarter. Gideon Davidson hitting the backfield. Ball pops out. Amherst Marcus Dooley jumps on it, and it's Lancer ball. Play action. Joe Borchers throws deep to Austin Rose, but it's broken up by James Morris. LCA ends up scoring, and it's 13 nothing. Later, Borchers handoff to Davidson. We've seen this uh, 20,000 times. He makes a dude slip and goes into the end zone. It's 20 nothing LCA. 20 seconds left in the half. Amherst, Gary Ligon, the third, goes deep but gets picked off by Davidson. Wow. Liberty Christian prevails 34 0. More Piedmont action. EC Glass at Brookville. Here comes the Bees. First half, George White connects with Tayon Mosby. That's a good catch through coverage. All right, then White's going to try to connect. A little bit later with Jonathan Wood. Check this out. He's picked off by Brookville. Steven Preston. The glass is going to get the ball back. It's still scoreless until Lavarius Gilbert takes it to the house. And it's 7-0 Hilltoppers. EC Glass gets the narrow win over Brookville, 23-21. All right, some more seminal scores for you, including Rustburg over JF and Heritage Blanks Liberty 56 to nothing. How about Rono Catholic in a score fest? They take out Castlewood and North Cross on a Thursday night 51 to nothing. Your final. We've got some news and notes for you. I want to mention Cup qualifying tomorrow 12:45. The Xfinity race, green flag at three. You can watch it right here on WSLS 10. Game one of the World Series tonight in progress, tied at five, and the Rail Yard Dogs win 4-1 at Macon, folks. Mr. Hammond, after careful consideration. I've decided not to endorse your park. Twas a fine show indeed. We'll see you next week.